welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. On today's episode, we're in Luminar 4 again. We're looking at the Details Enhancer tool. It's a great tool. I really wanted to break it down for you because there's a lot in it. And I really wanted to show you the nuts and bolts of that tool so you can get the best out of it. And by the time this tutorial is over, I think you'll be an expert with this particular tool. This is a tool that you really need to use at the beginning of your workflow, especially if you're using Camera Raw. And uh, you need to do that initial sharpening phase on your image. You need this tool for that. And also, when you just want to bring out certain detail to certain parts of your image, this tool breaks uh, detail down into small, medium, and large details. We're going to look at it in detail, pun intended. So without any further ado, let's get started. The Details Enhancer tool is really where you do all your sharpening in Luminar 4. So I really wanted to dig into it, give you a, an in-depth idea of how it works. And so let's do that. So I have this uh, gray square against a lighter gray background. And this is going to help us to see how this tool works, actually. So let me go ahead and zoom into about 200%. And I want us to really observe this corner right here and we'll see how this tool actually works here. The first thing we want to do is open up the tool. It's found in the Essentials panel and Details Enhancer. And these are the default settings right here. Let's open up the Advanced Settings. The first thing I want to do is come to Advanced Settings and move all these adjustments to the left. Before I start making adjustments, I just wanted to let you know that sharpening in digital photography is nothing more than adding contrast to edges. So bear that in mind. Now, look at the right-hand corner, upper corner of this box right here, okay? Uh, we're going to start out with sharpening first. We're going to work secondly with the small, medium, and large details. I'll show you how that works. But let's start out with sharpening first. Now, all the advanced settings are shut off right now. I'm going to take the sharpening control, and remember what I said about uh, sharpening is nothing more than adding contrast to edges. Watch these edges here, okay? When I take the sharpness control and start to move it to the right, notice something that happens on those edges. It might be hard to see, but can you see on the right side of the edge, you see a light line. On the left side of the edge, you see a dark line. That's the contrast I'm talking about, okay? Now, the sharpening radius, it will tell us how wide that line of contrast will be on both sides. So as I start to move the sharpening radius to the right, you'll see those lines growing. They'll get wider. Can you see that when I get to the whole way to the right? They're very wide. And you can also see I have a lot of noise in here. Now, I added this noise in this image so we could see how sharpening affects noise. And that's why Luminar have added this... Um, sharpening masking uh, tool right here and what that does is it dynamically reduces like high frequency noise and uh, as I start to move this to the right watch the noise start to slowly dissipate but you'll notice that the dark edge and the light edge stay relatively the same till I hit a certain point now remember the default setting for Luminar is 35 so Watch as I get closer to 35, but you'll notice as I start to drag it, see the noise is starting to go away. But once I hit 35 and start to go past that, watch the light in the dark edges here. They get, they start to fade away. So I'm basically getting rid of my sharpness the more I move this masking to the right. When I take it the whole way to 100, I've totally uh, shut the sharpening off of the image. Okay, so the sharpening masking, it's hard work for me to say, sharpening masking is really good for getting rid of high frequency noise. So let me double click this and set it back to Luminar's default. And you can see a little bit of noise in there, but if, if you said, eh, it's a little bit too much, you can start to take this and move it a little bit to the right. But don't go too far, because if you do, you'll start to lose some of the sharpening effect. I will be showing you some examples of actual uh, photographs that we're going to sharpen, but I wanted you to see the nuts and bolts of this first. The next thing I want to do is go ahead and let's uh, reset this details and answer. And let's pull our details masking back here, because now we're going to work on small, medium, and large details. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in to 300% because I think it'll be easier to see how the small, medium, and uh, large details work. 
All right, so the details protections is at, is at zero and the details masking is at zero. I'm gonna start with the small details and watch the corner again. The small details is very similar to sharpening. I'm gonna move it the whole way to the right. And can you see, we see a lot of high frequency noise coming up here, but you see a dark line on the left and a light line on the light, on the right. Let me double click small details. Let's take the medium details and move it up. Notice something with it. The line is a little, not quite as strong, but the line is a little bit wider, the dark line and the light line. Let's double click this and set it back. Now watch the large details. Notice how it's even wider. So it seems like it's dealing with the radius because yeah, the uh, definitely the line has gotten wider on the dark and the light side. So let's go ahead and set that back. Now let's take a look at the details protection and the details masking, how they work. I'm only going to work with the small details to show you how that works. Now the small details, I don't know if I said this earlier, but it kind of works similar to the sharpening adjustment right here. So we're going to move this the whole way to the right and watch the lines on the uh, edges. See the dark line and the light line, and we see a lot of high frequency noise here. Now the default setting for the uh, details masking, let me double click it, is 50. Let me take it the whole way to the left again. Now watch when I start to move this to the right, and mainly watch the noise, watch around this area, and watch the dark and the light side of the line. As I start to move this over, you can start to see that that noise starts to dissipate. And again, this is a dynamic adjustment here, so it's really going to look at the high frequency noise. Okay, once I hit 50, it gets a little more aggressive. But also notice that the dark and the light side of the line starts to dissipate as well. When I get it the whole way to 100, we've definitely lost our adjustment adjustment completely. So that's kind of important there. So now let's double click this and set it back to the default setting here. And if I wanted to get rid of a little bit more of that noise, I could just move it a little bit to the right here, like some, somewhere around there. Now the details protection, let's start to slide it. It's not as an aggressive an adjustment, so let's move it to the right. Even if I take it the whole way to the right, we're totally not losing our edge sharpness here. But it kind of backs it off a little bit. It's, it's a minor adjustment, but if you're getting too much, um, if your image is starting to look a little too over uh, sharpened, you can use this details protection to kind of ease it off a bit. Now let's work in an actual photograph. Uh, this is one I shot with Camera Raw. I have no adjustments on it. I have no um, sharpening on it. So this is the way I would sharpen my image. Make sure you're in the Essentials tab. Open up Details Enhancer. Uh, open up Advanced Settings. I'm going to start out with the default settings. This is the way I work. Uh, sharpening masking is at 35 and radius is at 50. Sharpens at zero. I'm going to zoom in. I would recommend zoom into 100%. Uh, I'm going to zoom into 200% just so you can see it. I want to make sure you can actually see the sharpening taking place. All right. And then I would take my sharpen control and start to move it to the right and stop when I thought it looked right or looked sharp. And I'm thinking maybe right around 60, somewhere around there. And then we can play with our sharpening radius and let's uh, move it to the right. It'll make those edge is a little bit wider it'll look a little sharper when i do that so you don't want to go too crazy it'll look it'll look really ugly and garish but again it defaults at 50 so i'm just going to move slightly right at 50 and i find you don't need too much maybe right around 58 somewhere around there looks good let's click the toggle here there's the before and there's the after it's really easy to do and it does a really nice sharpening job uh, if you had any high frequency noise, you could take this sharpening masking and move it to the right. But I find this default setting is generally where I leave it. So let's toggle one more time. Here's the before and here's the after. And that's how easy it is to sharpen your image. Next, we're going to go into the small, medium, and large details, and I'm going to show you how that works. But one thing I do want to say is um, the sharpening we just did, that's very important, uh, especially when you're shooting with camera raw. You want to make sure that you add that sharpening at the beginning phases of your editing process because when a can't when an image comes out of your uh, camera your digital camera it's kind of on the soft side especially if you shot with camera raw 
and you need to get it uh, sharpened up a bit and that is called capture sharpening okay so you want to add a little bit of sharpening so that's the first thing you want to do but when you add small medium and large details at least for me I'm basically using those adjustments for adding localized detail adjustments to my image in other words parts of the image where I want my viewer to really look at I'm going to use um, uh, special localized like masking in of details so I just wanted to state that at first so sharpening is really the first step in your uh, image processing and then the details enhancement is more of a uh, like a localized adjustment in my opinion okay we're seeing our image of full size so let's go ahead and zoom into 100% I was at 200% before but let's go into 100% I think that'll be good for this so now let's see how small medium and large details work on an actual image here as i told you earlier the small details kind of works like a sharpness adjustment so it's just looking at small details and as i bump it up to the right you can see like all these textures and the rocks and on the trees here are getting really sharpened okay so you can see that and you can adjust this accordingly according to taste let's go ahead and double click it now the medium details are looking for a little bit larger details you know not quite not quite large but in the medium size okay hence the name medium details so let's start to move it up and take a look at the image as i do this okay so it's just looking for medium details and sharpening them up and as i stated earlier i'm mainly using these adjustments for localized adjustments or where i will layer mask them into areas that i want my viewer to look at and if you've looked at some of my videos in the past you see that i do that a lot okay so that's medium details let's go ahead and reset it now let's look at large details so now it's looking for the really large areas of detail in our image okay see that as I move that up all these larger mossy areas in here are the bigger parts of the tree here and actual actual branches that are sticking out or roots here it's going to really target those okay so there you go now let's go ahead and uh, double click this and set it back but there it is large medium and small details and again i generally use it as a localized adjustment but it's a really powerful tool and i love the way that luminar lets us break it down into those three categories of details along with the actual sharpening which we have to introduce at the beginning of our editing phase of our image but the details enhancement, the small, medium, and large, or more for areas that you want your viewer to really look into. And again, as I said, more of a localized adjustment. I hope this video really broke it down for you so you really have a better, uh, better understanding of how this uh, detail enhancer tool works. You know, it's great for your beginning phases of editing, for your capture sharpening if you're shooting a camera raw, which you should be if you're not, by the way. Uh, and also using the small, medium, and large details for local adjustments to really bring detail out to areas that you want your viewer to be drawn to. Hey, if you enjoyed this video today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you're not yet subscribed to my channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon. And every time I upload a new uh, training tutorial, you'll be notified about it. Please leave comments and questions in the comment section below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. Thank you so much for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly, and I'll see each and every one right here next time. But until then, as always, happy editing.